my gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Oh, I think. Nickel 6 one thing logic on it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another great episode of Talk is Cheap. Started it out with some, by now, some pretty old UFO footage, or should I say UAP footage. Yeah. Uh, filmed by our friends in the U.S. military. Tonight, we're going to talk about what's to come. Take out the papers and the trash. Ladies and gentlemen of Planet Earth and Beyond, my name is Pete Hobleib, welcoming you to another excellent episode of Talk is Cheap. And as always, to my right, Mr. Dan Holfeld. How you doing, sir? I am doing well, and you're episode 169. Yes, yeah, 69, all right, man. man. All right. Anything special, please? <laughs> yeah, uh, unfortunately not. I get it now. Yeah, uh. <laughs> yeah I get it. But so, uh, yeah, no, other than, uh, you know, the innuendo of the episode mm. number, uh, that's pretty much the extent oh, of my... Uh, I thought you'd do something special for us. <sighs> you know. <laughs> uh, how about uh, <laughs> Pete Hallbleib's strange show, huh? Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, all right. I was going to go way into the gutter there. I, I pulled myself back, so we're, we'll be all right. Just a quick reminder to those folks, we are on... Alternative sites such as BitChute and now Rumble. Uh, BitChute can be a pain in the ass to upload sometimes, so we are on Rumble also. Go over there and subscribe because YouTube has just, we got a, another video kicked off a couple, two, three, four weeks ago now, and uh, they're just keep at it. Mm -hmm. And I also want to mention that we have the poster contest. This is the last episode we're going to do before. Yeah, last chance, folks. So yeah, last chance to get this in. Remix our theme contest. The theme you just heard coming in, remix that. Uh, the link is in the description of this video. It contains separate instrument tracks if you need that. Must be submitted by June 1st. Upload it to YouTube or another YouTube platform. And then just send it over to k2d4network at gmail.com. Really looking forward to seeing what some folks have out there. And you know what? If you're not good on that technological stuff, get a couple buddies, grab some kazoos, and make a recording. There you go. We'll accept that. Yeah, too. and here's the poster. We can send it right out to you. I'll get your address I'll privately, yeah. of course. So don't worry about spamming it. But we'll uh, get it sent to you, and then you can hang yeah. it up on the wall. Have us sign it if you want. Yeah, we'll get that out to Dan you promptly. Will, we'll leave you an adult themed message on there if you'd like. And again, this was actually a catalyst to try to get another host on this show um, to hopefully take it into, into a new direction. We're kind of like. <laughs> running on fumes right now uh -huh. um, we'll have to see what the future brings you know yeah dan you know i wouldn't say it's so much that we're running on fumes but it's more like what we want to talk about keeps getting just hammered well, yeah. man yeah. you know we don't win anymore and we can address that on a later show but uh we need the personality to do it um if you're available journalists again right. i want somebody that that's the whole reason i'm doing this poster contest because i want somebody with skills i want somebody that can get oh here's a clip from cnbc that says so and so, you know, cut that section out of the video, and then we can play clips. Mm -hmm. You know, if if anybody is listening to this and they ever listen to the No Agenda Show, a great podcast. I love it. The way they do it is brilliant, and that's kind of the direction I would like to take this show. And the way the hosts just kind of play off, and you get you know into the next clip, and it just flows. But that's awesome. a long term vision. Yeah, starting salary one hundred twenty five thousand dollars a year. Right, Dan? Oh, hell no. I'm going to have to check the books in that one. <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah, we'll have to get a hold of the counting. So, uh, so Dan, ladies and gentlemen, you may have noticed that up in the corner here, there's a little box that says 28. That, my friend, is the number of days before the U.S. government has got is required to disclose what they know about unidentified aerial phenomena formerly known as ufos yeah now what brought this out dan and again our viewers uh, tom DeLong, right uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 to the stars academy tom DeLong hit a wicked beat on his set and everybody by the way i want a few choice words for tom DeLong. that son of a bitch was after trump so much 
Not a fucking peep out of him with Joe Biden and the kids in cages. Oh, right. Every yeah. fucking tweet with that asshole. Eh, kids in cages. Be, 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 be. No, his guys in there. Nothing. Nothing. And they really haven't changed much. They're nothing. Still in cages. It got worse because they compacted him in there more. Yeah, right. Because more people started coming. Anyway, we digress. <laughs> Uh, great topic for another show. Um, so how did this all come about? Why all of a sudden are we going to be getting some information? Well, uh, during the Trump administration, you know, love them, hate them or otherwise, uh, there was a, an omnibill that was put together as part of this COVID stimulus package, right, to, to give a bunch of money to people that couldn't work, keep the economy rolling. Well, it's an omni bill because along with that, they just pretty much tacked on as much as they could. I can't remember how many thousands of pages it was, but it was a big one. So anyway, um, part of that omni bill was a section called the Intelligence Authorization Act. And Trump signed this act on uh, December 27th. They signed the bill that included this act on December 27th, 2020, which began a 180-day countdown. So 28 days from today, June 25th, is when they're supposed to tell us, uh, or rather disclose, what they know about unidentified aerial phenomena. So since you did the research for this and dug deep into it, you kind of got your, your mind set on what it is. But I'm going to tell you what my feelings are. I feel like it's going to almost be a nothing burger. Okay. But we'll see. We're going to get to that because there's a whole what to expect section. So anyway, um, didn't it did not get a lot of traction in the news uh, per se because the actual verbiage was not part of uh, this uh, Intelligence Authorization Act. It was actually in the, found in the committee comments, which was not like released publicly. You have to kind of dig for it a little bit to find the comment section. Um, authored by Marco Rubio, because he's been a little bit of a UFO uh, proponent, you know, demanding that things uh, be released and people explain what the heck other people are seeing up in the air. And actually, they were saying, well, Louis Elizondo was saying this too, that those senators... I think congressmen too were privy to some videos and some things that the public hasn't been yet. Mm -hmm. So, yep, yep, yeah. A lot of people are saying, you just wait, you know, it's going to be crazy what they're going to release. It's going to be a game changer. We're going to see all this crazy stuff. So, uh, you know, folks like you and I, Dan, we're like hopefully optimistic, <laughs> cautiously optimistic that, uh, you know, this is going to give us some good if, stuff. If, if there's one thing I've learned in this, is to never get my hopes up yeah. after all this research I've done. My, you know, but even, yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a way good, good approach, Dan. You know, uh, a pessimist is always always nicely surprised whereas an optimist is always let down right um but uh you know it's interesting too because in the last few weeks month or so um they've been there's been some more leaked video footage you know the the um trying the pyramid uh, shaped one uh the pyramid shaped uap video that we actually just uh looked at at, at the, during the live show two weeks ago um, some photos by F-16 pilots and stuff. So it, it's actually some of this stuff's leaking out a little early. But, but supposedly the best is yet to come. So fingers crossed, right? <laughs> um, and it only makes common sense. Yeah, it, is, it does, right? It only makes common sense that for decades, if not centuries, right, people have been seeing weird stuff in the sky, man. And But you know, to think if this actually does go down the way that, well, the UFO community hopes... I mean, we could see some spectacular stuff. Like, mm -hmm. is it set up for June? If if that's when this this do I say the word V O T E F A U? <laughs> if all this stuff comes out, and then that overthrows that, and then you got this this coming out at the same time, mm -hmm. everything kind of gets hit at once here. Yeah, right. Or is it? Yeah, distracting distraction because there's tactic, people that right people that talk about. Fourth of July mm -hmm. for this next miraculous date. Well, it's only a week or a week and a half away from the 25th of June. It'd be a hell of a celebration, wouldn't it? 28 days, folks. Um, so uh, I so, might have to crack a beer at that point. Yes, oh, yeah. I think we should. <laughs> and, and, you know, coincidentally enough, folks, that is June 25th is the day of our next live show. So oh, yes. guaranteed, yes. tune in. We will. That will be the hot topic. And either we will be ooing and eyeing on videos and, and released documents, or we will be b p pissing and moaning about nothing. Ripping and the tearing. Ripping and the tearing. And, the ripping ripping and, the tearing. and we'll be ripping and tearing because nothing's out. So, um, I would say that's kind of destiny that that fell on the same 
yeah. week. It, it maybe. So it, yeah, maybe we're gonna be we're gonna be doing some uh, looking at that before the show. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, we're all day long. We might as well. I might as well just take the day off yeah, work because I'm not gonna get much done that day. <laughs> right. Uh, as I look at that. So um, you know this uh, this act, the Intelligence Authorization Act, also requires the government to do some other things. And that and I'm gonna I want to talk a little bit because the big news right is oh we're gonna hear about UFOs, but what else does it do? Um, for starters, it requires the standardization and of collection and reporting on UAPs. Okay. So first, uh, you know, right now, if the Navy had a sighting and the Air Force had a sighting and uh, the Army had a sighting, uh, public had a sighting, there was no centralized database of this stuff. It was all compartmentalized. And of course, you know how the government works, right? Super secret, secret, you know, and the FBI would come in if it was like maybe, uh, you know, civilians spotted and stuff. But so f- step one, it says... We're going to standardize the collection and reporting of unidentified aerial phenomena, and then so that would, so if like a a citizen seen something and then uh, let's say the navy does or something that they would just combine those. Yeah, yeah. What whenever any uh, official government agency is notified of a sighting or an experience or something, it would all be channeled like kind of to the same hub, you know, so we can have all that data in the same spot. Okay. So I'm sure, you know, so you can, you know, do your trend analysis data, this and that. So, which kind of is like blue book, but I guess it'd be more public. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, yeah, it's going to be much more, uh, I wouldn't say publicly accessed, but publicly known, right. It's going to, there's going to be, uh, you know, uh, established uh, avenues of reporting. So if you're a, you know, a sheriff's department in the middle of Montana, you, you know, you know you, that this is where you go to report your sighting. And then it's also going to require the detailed analysis of this data and intelligence collected by geospatial intelligence, signals intelligence, human intelligence, measurement and signals intelligence, and data from FBI that was derived from intrusions of UAPs over restricted airspace, which is happening more and more frequently now, Dan. Um, you know, it's always happened. You've, you've heard the stories about the UFOs over the White House, over Area 51, shutting down nuclear reactors. But uh, in recent times, they're, they're noticing uh, more, you know, uh, these uh, pyramid shapes that was swarming that uh, destroyer. I forget I forget what the destroyer's name was. You know, it was, it was uh, USS Russell, I believe. Was it the Russell? Okay. Yes. Okay, very good. Um, you know, so it's happening more and more. So, um, it also is going to, the thing to, is it probably happened a lot, but you just weren't told about right? it. Right. Or it was never, yeah, it was never decompartmentalized. You know, the Navy probably had a bunch of instances of it, but it was all top secret, kept quiet. Mm-hmm. Now this is like saying enough's enough. P- people need to know, you know, there's the go- certain government agencies as, as well need to know. Um, Congress needs to know, right, so that they can plan accordingly for the na- the quote unquote national security threat that it poses. Which my thought is is that if it was a national security threat, we would know it because they would be using it to <laughs> to destroy us right now if they really wanted to, right? Um, it also, well, that's according to Reed. Harry Reed said it was the Russians. Yeah, right. Well, the why Russians. wouldn't they just take advantage of that? Right. Yeah, you know, or it must be doing recon for why, many, many you know, years, right? Why, why are they hacking Target instead? You know, <laughs> instead of coming after pipelines, us, right? yeah, and pipelines and stuff. So it also requires a, a process or a description of the in, interagency process for ensuring timely data collection and centralized analysis. So basically, centralized analysis. You have the same kind of group that's analyzing this data, so that's consistent, um, and it's done in a timely manner. So no more mothballing this stuff. You know, for forty years later, for some guy with wild hair uh, doing ancient aliens episodes to come find it, right? Um, and of course, identifying the potential threats these pose. Of course, and then assess if it's a foreign adversary or not. The Russians, right? <laughs> you know, um, and then also provide rec- recommendations on increasing data collection, enhancing research and development, and increasing funding. I'm so, liking it so far. Yeah, right. And so, yeah, that's it's very cool because already again, and two weeks ago, Dan, in the live show, you covered that. Was it the CIA admitted that they? Was it the CIA admitted that they were studying uh, wreckage? Uh, engineering was what group was that um i forget but they the government admitted that they had uh this the memory metal and they were analyzing it and using it uh pentagon was it the pentagon uh for um you know and and that they had recovered ufo crashed materials okay so the government's already admitted that 
they have unidentified aerial phenomena wreckage that they've been studying this memory metal, right? You can fold it up, bend it, and let it go, and it goes back into its whatever Nint- shape it nintinol. was Nintinol. Nintinol, yep, nintinol. that's right. It had similar properties to the memory metal found near Roswell. So in this comment section, it requires that the report shall be submitted in unclassified format. That means, Dan, that guys like you and I, through Freedom of Information Act, <laughs> can get the unclassified version. However, they would, you wouldn't even have to go through FOIA, though, either, would you? It would be public. Well, it would be un, oh, unclassified versus declassified. Different, right? If it's a report, they got to... Well, we'll find out. You ta- you're talking about the information in general and that the report's separate. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Because they're going to be releasing the information. And I guess I don't know, you know, technically, Dan, I don't know if you'd, you'd, if it's if unclassified is different than declassified because... Because um, otherwise we're in the same boat and then like through a, through a FOIA, you have to come up with keywords. Yes, and, and money, right, thing. and pay for it. So we'll see. Let's, let's, let's keep our fingers crossed that there's going to be... I would think that the second it's released, there's going to be... Dozens, if not hundreds, of news agencies, individuals, groups that are getting this information and putting it out there for us to easily access. I choose to believe that's going to happen. So, but here's here's the nothing burger that might be frying in the <laughs> background, Dan. But here's here's the caveat. But uh, this report can include a classified annex, meaning there uh-huh. can they can put classify sections of this report that are not released that they deem too sensitive for uh, us, oh, no. uh, you know, um, uh, freaking peasants to understand or be, be known about. However, with, you know, um, I don't think necessarily that that Rubio's crew is going to be happy with that because they've been they've been hounding us to release this to the public because we have a right to know. So, um couple interesting things leading up to this too uh i would like to say that this this uh the committee comments uh or rather the intelligence authorization act including the committee comments was actually written june 17th of last year okay so that's been out there for a while we were just waiting for the trump administration to find a way to get that somewhere so it could be um you know enacted into law and of course this omnibill with the stimulus was the perfect way to do it so many people threw in so much other crap in that too but this was a good one this was a good gem to, to include definitely um, fast forward to august 14th still another four and a half months before the bill was signed uh, the government went ahead and uh, created an unidentified aerial phenomena UAP task force. Uh, the UAP, oh, yeah, that's the, right. The UAPTF. So prepping for this, they already created a task force. Yeah, was, uh, they had the ATIP first with Luis Elizondo, yep. and then they come up with this other new name because it's like, oh, we shut that one down. Or so they could say, oh. It's no longer, yeah, being done. And, uh, I don't know. I still kind of believe that Luis Elizondo is doing what he's supposed to do for part of his job. So they shut that down. Then he can talk about it, or not uh-huh. everything, of course, but some stuff, and start up a new one. Yep, and then that's classified information, right? So the, this task force, uh, the Department of Defense established it, and uh, what its purpose is is to improve its understanding of and gain insight to, and I'm quoting here, the nature and origins of unidentified aerial phenomena. The mission of the task force is to detect, analyze, and catalog UAPs that could potentially pose a threat to U.S. national security. Interesting. This task force, the mission is to detect them. So they're going to be now actively looking for these, Dan, on top of everything. It's not going to be just the flybys by the F-16s or these uh, swarms that are that are messing with destroyers. They're going to actually be putting stuff in place to actually go out and attempt to find these. Well, they, they have those... God, weren't they using stuff already? Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, I mean, it, it's pinged on... Mul- they ping on multiple systems and stuff yeah. uh, that they this have already. Just, yeah. And I'm sure that there's been groups that have been that have been looking for them. But now it's, it's much more official. We have a, a task force set up to specifically detect them. Um. John Ratcliffe, 
there was a lot of stuff. Harry Harry Reid weighed in a lot of the, on a, a lot of this stuff, but I kind of omitted him. He's been a, a vocal proponent for this stuff for many many years already. But I don't trust him. Well, you know, they're all a little wacky anyway, right? But John Ratcliffe, <laughs> uh, he was the director of national intelligence under Trump from May of 2020 to January of 2021. Here's a quote from Mr. Ratcliffe. There are a lot more sightings that have been made public. Okay. Surprise, surprise, right, Dan? Some of those have been declassified. And when we talk about sightings, we are talking about objects that have been seen by Navy or Air Force pilots or have been picked up by satellite imagery that, frankly, engage in actions that are difficult to explain, movements that are hard to replicate that we don't have the technology for or traveling at speeds that exceed the sound barrier without a sonic boom. So basically, that last piece, define the laws of physics as we know it. Okay? That's crazy. There, there's something out there that can somehow uh, manipulate the sound barrier without that, uh, is it friction? I don't know exactly, no, associated boom that comes with, with, with traveling faster than the speed of, speed of sound. Interesting, too, a couple of weeks ago, live show, there was talk about a uh, video, I believe it was, re- was it released, uh, you know, just a couple, we had recently released video that shows one of these UAPs going from the air and then diving into the ocean underwater. We don't have anything that can do that right now. That's crazy if you think about it. Airplanes and submarines are designed totally different due to the pressures that they experience. You know, less pressure up top, more pressure right. underwater. But then there was that Navy patent too that was... With the ion... Uh, uh, remember I showed that to you where the, you can fly through water and remove the... Yeah, with the... With the I, I forget uh, the right wording of yeah, it. Yeah, there was the, the ion bubble it generates around yeah, it, and it. And it creates a frictionless, uh, you know, basically environment uh that you put your craft in and then it just moves with it and yeah. it's completely and frictionless that's a pat- navy patent yeah so yeah, yeah this is my mind blowing I, I mentioned it multiple times on the show i got a buddy laser fit phd in laser physistry uh claims to have seen one of these units in the 80s and he just when i was talking to him about this stuff he's like ah, he, the first time i said that you know they have these tic tac things are doing crazy and he just laughs he goes hell they've had that for 40 years i saw that in 1983 <laughs> Uh, when I was working on a, you know, a top secret thing for the government, not surprised. He's not convinced it's aliens, man. He's like, no, it's, it's, it's humans. We've had this stuff for 50 years already. It's just not released. He just didn't brush me. I've said, whatever he goes and he, and and his big argument, he goes, he, you know, I said, well, it could be aliens, right? He goes, why the, would they want to come here? They would take one look at us and turn around and leave. He said, "You know, and I, I agree. You know, uh, you know. Well, yeah. If there's you know, one thing that this year's proof that there's a lot of stupidity. Here, yeah, so. it's like maybe they would come visit us, like going to a zoo or something. You know, but uh, but yeah, he wasn't convinced it was anything otherworldly. But not everybody's convinced of that. I don't know. Maybe you'd have fun like playing with the ants, though, wouldn't you? I don't know. Depends on like you got to think on their level too. Yeah, but. Maybe you just want to, you know, fuck with the local population. Yeah, right. You know, it's like you take that uh, <laughs> that stick and poke the ant hill yeah. with it to watch all the ants go crazy and or get the magnifying glass out and cook them as they run or something. Yeah. So uh, continuing with Mr. Ratcliffe, uh, he says, when we talk about sightings, it's not just a pilot or just a satellite or some intelligence collection. Usually, usually we have multiple sensors that are picking up these there things. There you go. So it that's crazy, man. It's so it's not like just someone says they see something. Oh, it's just a sunspot or something. No, it's actually showing up on equipment they have. Former CIA director John Brennan said some mind blowing crap here. Uh, he says, but I think some of the phenomena we're going to be seeing continues to be unexplained and might, in fact, be some type of phenomena that is the result of something that we don't yet understand. And here's the kicker. And that could involve some type of activity that some might say constitutes a different form of life. Mm. Interesting, huh? So when we talk about things like uh, increasing vibration, uh, sending past the third dimension and stuff, I mean, are we possibly, is he possibly, Dan, suggesting that we're talking fourth, fifth dimensional beings here? Different form of life. Of life. I could just be referring to aliens, I guess. I don't well, necessarily. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, the, you know, 
You're right. It could be. But I would think that, you know, is form of life and life form interchangeable? A different life form versus a different, different form when, of life. When I th- when I say form of life, I think of instead of carbon based, it's silicone based or energy based or. Where was that quote from? Was it on a, a news interview? Uh, it was. Oh, it was from one of the reference links I put at the bottom. Bottom here, I I can't, I can't recall exactly. Dan's different than I am in the sense that he's uh, really adopted a pessimistic view and he's not holding his breath I have. for this. I mean, this, if there's been anything that's changed with me over these last two years is I've really been backing off of the whole crazy conspiracy guy. <laughs> and, and, and reality <laughs> setting in there. Hey, maybe maybe some of this stuff isn't heading their direction as quickly as we want. I, or? It's, it's to the point where it's like, you know, I hope stuff happens. I know about it. I've done the research. You know, you could talk about... F- you know, this 5D earth thing or this new earth, Mm -hmm. you know, great. If that comes great, I know about it and why this bubble of sweeping across the the land for great, but I'm not going to like waste any more time with it when we're still living in 3D and I'm going to try to live this 3D life the best as I can and and not worry about 5D. If it's here, great. And when it happens, you'll, you'll join it kind of thing and stuff. So, um, so anyway, uh, you know, I, I'm a little bit more optimistic about this, thinking that we're going to get some new things to talk about. Um, some people are going to wake up a little bit. And um, it sounds like to me that this is more of a uh, open blue book phase mm-hmm. instead of them doing their little sneakity sneak mm-hmm. research on their own. Then they can actually, okay, we got these sightings. Then they can start like, okay, we're researching these craft, and then they can start doing this in the public light. Yep. And then you can start bringing this stuff out, and then maybe at some point the ET thing will hit. I think we all want that ET on stage with the president and then the disclosure. But yeah, yeah. I know it's not going to come the that Eisenhower, way. And this, this the almost, Eisenhower handshake, right, with the grays? This almost kind of sounds like a slow disclosure. Yep. Uh, pathway here. Well, well, I'll tell you what, man. Look around the world, man. There's millions, if not billions, of people that are just not going to accept it. They're not going to believe it, no matter what. A little green alien could walk up to them and shake <laughs> their hand, and they're still not. They're going to walk away and not believe it because people are stupid. That's right. The vast majority on this planet are idiots and are entrenched in tradition and brainwashing and you name it. You know, they just they won't let go of their beliefs no matter what is in front of them you know yeah. and i'm sure we all know somebody like that in our lives that just refuse to believe it even when it's staring them in the face um uh, so i i think that the slow disclosure probably is right it's obviously going way slower than somebody well, the, you the, or i would would prefer the issue is they could have went they could have went a little harder these last couple of years, but instead everything got pushed to the side because Orange Man bad. That's all they were well, concerned yeah, about. Yeah, right. I mean, and, nice and there's guy. Reasons why certain people wouldn't want this disclosed, right? But what's I'm sure what's happening is that the the real people running the world have figured out a way to utilize this to put further control on us. The whole national security thing, right? There's a way to spin this to get us all panicked and we yeah. all must move to this safe zone and, and and we can protect you here from this threat you know that's a thing they could they could use project blue book mm-hmm. put some of these ufo craft that like maybe after they can oh we we found this down craft we studied it and there's these dead alien bodies inside and then all of a sudden they can pull a blue book yeah and then everybody's going to get scared when they see it you know holographic projection oh, blue or, beam yeah blue beam blue beam yeah. yep 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 Yep. Blue Book was the, the previous investigator. Anyway, but yeah, you're right, though, because they can say, we found some plans and it looks like they're planning an invasion. <laughs> and all of a sudden they put a hologram up. And, and what we'll, better distract? Like they tried to, to uh, do the one world government with the P to the A to the D to the Demic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And with and, that, that doesn't work. So no, now they can do this. Yeah. And they're, they're just kind of ratcheting it up. Right. And then in the meanwhile, all the pedophiles are stuffing little kids in their suitcases and heading to their bunkers, you know, <laughs> and stuff. Um, so, you know, folks, I, I, again, I'm personally really looking forward to this. When I first heard about it coming out, it's I'm like, something. June I mean, could not get here quick enough. It's definitely something to keep, get us going here and at least see what happens. I mean, I guess this will be official and all that. It, 
Now that it's official. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Know. Now that it's, it's Some official. Some people need that, but it's going to, I think this is just, uh, just a stepping stone, of yeah, course. 30 years ago, Dan, this would have been unheard of. That's man. a true story. You know, this was just not. 30 years ago, they were still laughing people out of jobs if they saw a UFO. You know, yeah. that's changed. It's That has changed now. It's 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 a step in the right direction. Unfortunately, Dan, I'm, I'm going to say that as we, every day that goes by, I'm not confident we're, you and I are ever going to be fully satisfied in our mind in our lifetime, but it's coming. Maybe our kids or our grandkids or their kids will be able to to have that understanding that that you and I so I guess, earnestly want, right? I guess if the if the disclosure of the UFO, or I guess if the alien thing doesn't get disclosed, but at least if the technology does, that's the most important thing because that's why we're so hindered. And if you want to sit there and talk about carbon taxes, we shouldn't have fossil fuels. We'll release this technology then. Let's, no one's going to complain about a freeless mm-hmm. energy, but oh no, we got to keep the clamps on. That's what it's all about well, yeah. control. And, and that's another thing too. And I think part of it is, is that if it gets to a point of disclosure and it comes out that this has been sat on for so long, there's going to be a lot of people upset with the powers that be. Yeah, that's why why did you not tell us? Or, and what yeah. else aren't you telling us? Yeah, they're not going to do it that way. You can see it. You can see the pl- it's already the stage is set for them to just do what we just said. Oh, we got all the... We're doing this so when we see another setting, we'll all collaborate. Then they collaborate. Then they get the ship. And then they study it. And then they reverse engineer the technology. And then... Yep. But that at that point, then unless it's a foreign adversary, then it wouldn't be alien. But mm-hmm. you know, it, they're gonna have to at, at some point acknowledge an alien presence. You would think. You it, you know yeah you would think if there there is or the questions would be enough that uh, they would be forced to admit or at, at least say where they they think it's coming from because it would be really interesting and I hope. To God that we get pictures of wreckage or downed craft or something would be so cool, right? You know, and if you you look in there and there's all these weird hieroglyphs <laughs> and, you know, you have the little seat with the, the mind control <laughs> thing that's this big that's, that wouldn't fit any human, you know, people can piece that together pretty quick, you know. Yeah, so. you sit and you think about uh, when we talked about experiencers like uh, who was the guy that cut wood? Travis Walton. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Very what good. he went through, it, you think it would be cool to go through that, but you're in such a fright state that you can't even like. I don't enjoy know if it. I would want to go through that. It would take me a long time. Um, it would be, it would be freaky. Like, I think if I seen aliens out in the distance that could, you know, approach them safely, mm-hmm. instead of them approaching me, like you're waking up. Where face all of a sudden the beam that. comes out, and then you wake up on a table with the yeah, probes. And yeah, that you know, wouldn't be fun. A little no. too much. I like to dip my toe in the water. Yeah. I don't like to dive in the pool. Right I want to. I want to meet that alien that Dustin talked about that one night that came in and had her way with that dude. Remember? The, the, oh, yeah. Remember that? that well, that'd be my kind of have to man. pay alien child support. Oh, pay. what was, what's <laughs> the con- <laughs> galactic conversion rate for us dollars? That could get expensive, Dan. Uh, maybe, expensive. maybe what, the, maybe they'll take Bitcoin. Yes. Maybe, oh, there, maybe you there you go. Maybe that's the new galactic <laughs> currency, all this uh, cryptocurrency. We should call it galactic currency. Yes. Uh, Ooh, I think you just made a new currency for yeah. Ooh, galactic crypto. currency, crypto. man. We're going to be on Mars before you know it. we got to trade with them somehow, right? <laughs> um, well, so that's what I had, Dan. I wanted just to kind of, you know, hopefully drum up the sport. 28 days. Here, oh, oh. 28 days right there. 28 days later. Right? Oh, that's that zombie movie, yeah. right? <laughs> here, I can't do that very good. Right, anyway, screw it. Oh, um, I hit the glory folks, hole right here. <laughs> stay tuned because I tell you what, on the 25th of June, we are going to be uh, – either really excited or Dan is going to probably have to be talked off the, the roof from jumping <laughs> and, and I'll, we'll film that. And, and it'll cannot. all be live. Yes. It'll we'll all it be, it's going to be a live show. So when, when Dan just loses faith and wants to end it all, you'll all, all can help me talk him, talk him back to us because we've got a lot more stuff to talk about. We'll do it live. All right. Any closing comments, Dan? I think that's it. Thanks for your time. Thanks everybody. And remember talk is cheap where cheap is talk. And talk Talk is is cheap. cheap.